How's it going, people? Doing pretty good. Enjoying uh, some time off at my place on Mount Hope. And um, I don't have any, inter any internet or TV up here, so it's not much to um, do this late at night. Except um, have a martini and make a video. Of course, I don't have anything planned. I haven't been making videos very much these days. I've just so distracted. Yeah. But it's kind of a rule, you know. Can't have a martini unless I make a video. Mm. Well, somebody uh, left a, a, a video hyperlink in the comment section on one of my videos since we don't have response videos anymore and that's too bad um, it um, I would I I saw it on my Google you know notifications but apparently it was blocked as spam I I went to this channel you know I went to the video uh, that was sent to me and started to watch it decided to copy it instead so I could watch it now I did read the comment section though and um, yeah it seemed like he was spamming uh, all anti-theist atheist free-thinking vloggers with the same link and they were all telling him hey <laughs> don't spam me well, I want to give this guy the benefit of the doubt. That's why I stopped watching his video. It, and it's been a couple weeks, you know, since I copied it. I just been putting this off. So, without further ado, let's watch Real Christ Talk. episode of Real Christ Talk Spiritual Absence for Real Situations. Today we're on chapter 4 talking about Mary Baxter's divine revelation of hell. Jesus Christ is bringing Mary Baxter into the bowels of hell and we're back in the right uh, Mary Baxter. So she had a revelation about visiting hell with Jesus. Instead of Virgil this time. Um, all right. I confess, uh, Mary Baxter sounds faintly familiar, but no bell is ringing. And Kevin, do you have a bird? Or do you need to replace the battery to your smoke alarm? Because what's with a damn chirping? All right. Get back to the video. Egg of hell, and in this chapter we call this one more pits. More pits. Um, and in this chapter, Jesus gives her a tour. You see four people. We have two that were female, one that was a male, and another that was the last female. The two females, one was a church member, the other one was a preacher. The male, he was 23 years old and he died, which is one on the young people. And we have another, the last female, which we talk about. Okay, so let's go over some, well, let's go over the book. Okay, so let's go over the book and go check these people out that were in these pits that Jesus talked to. All right? In more pits in chapter four. Let's read about it. Alright. Quit smacking the book, please. Page. Start right here. Okay. 
it says, I call you, but you will not hear me, nor would you repent of your sins. The woman said to Jesus, you remember, Lord, how I went to church and was a good woman. I joined the church. I was a member of your church. I knew your call was on my life. I knew I had to obey that call at all costs, and I did. Jesus said, woman, you are still full of lies and sin. I called you, but you would not hear me. True, you were a member of a church, but being a member, being a church member did not get you into heaven. Your sins were many, and you did not repent. Missed it by that much. You caused others to stumble at my word. You would not forgive others when they hurt you. You pretended to forgive others, but you pretended to love and serve me when you were with the Christians. But when you were away from the Christians, you lied. You cheated and you stole. You gave heed to seducing spirits and enjoyed your double life. You knew the straight and narrow way. And Jesus said, you also had a double tongue. You talked about your brothers and sisters in Christ. You judged them and thought you were holier than they. And when there were gross and when they was earlier than they, when there was gross sin in your heart. This I know, you would not listen to my sweet spirit of compassion. You judge the outside of a person without regard to the fact that many were children in the faith. You were very hard. Yes, you said you loved me with your lips, but your heart was far from me. You knew the ways of the Lord and you understood. You played with God. And God knows all things. Don't you be had, with your if imaginary you had sincerely friend. served, you would not be here today. You cannot serve Satan and God at the same time. So, Republican Christians, explain that. Jesus turned to me and said, Many in the last days will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and will serve sin. Come out from among them and be separate. Walk not in the way with them. As we walked away, the woman began to curse and swear at Jesus. She screamed and cried with rage, and we walked on. I was so weak in body. Okay? So, Jesus is taking a tour through hell with uh, Mary Baxter. And going, eh, nice try. Gonna burn you in hell forever. Uh, yeah, you were good all the way up to the last second. Burn you forever. What kind of dick is this who walks, who walks through hell? And going, ha ha. All right, Kev, I'm having a little trouble following this. I keep forgetting that this shit's real to you. Because to me, it's like we're talking Mother Goose and why we should take it seriously. <laughs> All right. More about this vision of Mary Baxter hanging with JC in hell, pointing out all the failures. <sighs> I was so weak in body. Okay. So we have this woman who had who was living a double life. Who is it? Except me, maybe. And Sunday, she was holy. And every day she was she in church. She gave heed to seducing spirits. She had a double tongue. You know. No, I. She no. lived like she was Christian. It was, it was, it was two ways she lived. Right. She Can't go no shit about being Christians. <laughs> Read a Bible instead.
sadly to say, It'll blow your mind. A lot of that is going on. Okay. <laughs> you notice that? A lot of that is going on. Let's move on to the next woman. It's all tax free, too. Now, this woman was a preacher. Okay. The woman said, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. Jesus is the light of the world. Come to Jesus and he will save you. When she spoke, many of the lost souls around her listened. Some swore and cursed at her. Some told her to stop. Still others said, is there really hope? Or help and Jesus. All hope. Help us, Jesus. Great cries of sorrow filled the air. I didn't understand what was happening. I did not know why the woman was preaching the gospel here. The Lord knew my thoughts. He said, Child, I called this woman at the age of 30 to preach my word and to be a witness of the gospel. I call different ones for different purposes in my body. But if a woman or if a man or a woman, boy or girl, doesn't want my spirit, I will depart. Yes, she did answer my call for many years, and she grew in the knowledge of the Lord. She learned my voice, and she did many good works for me. She studied the word of God. She prayed often, and she had many prayers answered. Oh, really? She taught many people the way of holiness. She was faithful in her house. The years went by until one day she found out that her husband was having an affair with another woman. And even though he asked for forgiveness, she grew bitter and would not forgive him and try to save her marriage. True, <laughs> her husband was wrong. He did commit a grave sin. But Reach this woman trust. knew my word. She knew to forgive, and she knew that with every temptation, there is a way of escape. Her husband asked her to forgive him. She would not. Instead, anger took root. Anger grew inside her, and she would not turn it over to me. She turned more bitter each day and said in her heart, Here I am serving God all the way, and my husband is running around with another woman. So? Do you think that is right? She said to me. I said, No, it is not right. Pretty fucked up. But he came to you and repented, and you and said he would never do that again. She should have just bought I told his bullshit. Her daughter, look inside the faith yourself is about. and see that you have caused this yourself. Not me, Lord, she said. I am the holy one, and he is the sinful one. She would not listen to me. Time went on, and she wouldn't pray to me or read the Bible. She became very angry, not only at her husband, but also at those around her. Ain't that a bitch? Sorry about that. I didn't want to miss anything. She quoted the scriptures, but she would not forgive him. She would not listen to me. Her heart grew bitter, and great sin entered in. Murder grew in her heart, where her love once, once had been. And one day, in anger, she killed her husband and the other woman. Satan then took her over completely. And she killed herself. I looked at the lost soul and had given up Christ. I looked at the lost soul that had given up Christ and condemned her soul forever to the flames. Smoke detector, by the way. <laughs> Big hint there. That's either a canary or a smoke detector. Either way, nice video. Um... All right, so she isn't allowed to feel the way she really feels. See, that's what's wrong with Christianity. You want to talk about double life and double tongues and look, 
there's no way modern people live the Christian life without being fake most of the time. This whole uh, no true Scotsman fallacy. Anyway, let's give Kevin some more here. Sorry, I haven't really watched this and so I haven't been prepared. I'm just winging it here. But anyway, finite crime, infinite punishment. You know, yeah, it's fucked up. She killed her husband. She should have just prayed about it. I would have got something done. And the pain, I listened as she responded to Jesus. I will forgive now, Lord, she said. Let me out. Okay. I will obey you now. Sure. See, Lord, I am preaching your word now. And yeah. an hour demons will come and take me to be so tormented worse. Even worse. For hours, they will torture me. Because I was preaching your word, my torments are worse. Please, Lord, I beg you, let me out. Okay. No, oh, no, it isn't okay. <laughs> Wait. Jesus is the God of everything. The first light, uh, the Father and He and the Ghost are one. So, then He asked, He could do anything in the world except forgive sin without blood. But He found a loophole, because drowning the planet didn't work. Uh, you know, confounding the languages just made everything worse. Uh, Kev, this is all, this is all fantasy. I just think about it. Read your damn Bible, please. Read it. Read one, uh, gospel, take notes. Then forget that gospel and read another gospel and take notes. And then compare it if you have the nerve. <sighs> anyway, this isn't all right, because if God can do anything, and he's bled all over for everybody, you know, if he could die for you before you're born, then he should, you know, that door should always be open. This limited time offers shit. I'm sorry. You find out it's all true, and you repent after you're dead. Nope. You had to be alive. It had to be possibly not true. You had to be believe it without any way of verifying it. And you didn't, so... <sniffs> all right. Anyway. No, it isn't all right, Kev. Now let's hear you explain this. this the, you died in your sins. You're fucked. You have this preacher. She studied the Word. She obeyed the Lord, and she served him with all her heart until, well, I, I, I'm figuring since Satan couldn't get her because she's doing what she's supposed to be doing, Satan said, okay, I'm going to get her like this. I got her like this. And he got her through her husband. No, I don't. So, <laughs> she failed the fucking test. You know, Job even got to bitch and moan a little bit after he got tested. You know? God basically said, look, you're not even slime under my toenail. So, shut the fuck up. I can fuck your life up because I made you. Uh, Kev... You know, the shit you're into, this belief system, it's designed to make happy slaves. It never condemns slavery. It, uh, it doesn't fix anything. You know, it doesn't make us all know that murder is bad. Uh, we already knew that. Even Cain knew that he'd fucked up. And hell, when Moses killed the uh, taskmaster, I mean, why did he hide the body in the sand and flee in the middle of the night? Long before he'd got the car of thou shalt not commit murder on the stones. I think it might have already been illegal. <sighs> Crime of passion. I mean, yep, you're fucked forever. Kev, this doesn't make any sense. 
So. So. Let's continue to the man, the 23-year-old man. Okay. This man was 23-year-old when he came here. He would not listen to my gospel. Third finger. He heard my word many times and was often in my house. I drew him by my spirit unto salvation, but he wanted the world and its lust. He liked to drink and would not heed my call. He was raised in the church, but he would not commit himself to me. One day he said to me, I will give my life to you one day, Jesus. One day. But that day never came. One Most night after right the party, away. he was in a car wreck and was killed. Satan deceived him to the very end. Okay. First of all, this is just a fucking allegory. This isn't even a real story. It's one of those Joel Olstein's uh, story. You know, I knew a guy, and this happened, and boy, perfect for my my little sermonette. Uh, look, I've been a Christian. At least I thought I was. I tried to be. I used to talk to Jesus all the time. And sometimes I went around and just tried to talk to the old man because I didn't understand the you know, middleman business anyway. But, um... Uh, You know, reading the Bible is what wakes you up. Not reading, you know, Mary Baxter. It's just a, a lukewarm retread of the Divine Comedy. You know, what um, the uh, science fiction books, Sci uh, Inferno and Escape from Hell, they're nice updates on that. This... This is just tired, you know. Look, this is bullshit. <laughs> he was killed instantly. He would not listen to my calls. Others and then they backslide were and they also get killed saved. in the accident. Others were also killed in the accident. He always gets saved is in the to moment. Kill, steal, and destroy. If only this young man had listened. It is not the father's will. That any perish. Are you going to be okay there? It's okay, not the right. Father's will that any perish. Satan wanted this man's soul, and he destroyed it through carelessness, sin, and strong drink. Many homes and lives are destroyed every year because of alcohol. Alcohol is just some chemicals, you know. It's not a, the devil. There is no devil, Okay. There's some pretty fucked up people in the world, though. Many of them identify as religious. It doesn't mean shit. Like I said, the problem is extremism. I recommend you pick up your Bible and read it slow and read a chapter a night. I want everyone to read the Bible. I always tell people to. Read the Quran and the Book of Mormon while you're at it. I've done it. Uh, at least then you can say, yeah, I read it. Fail. It doesn't work. It doesn't wash. If people could only see that the lust and desires of the world are only <clears throat> for a season, if you come to the Lord Jesus, he will deliver you from strong drink. Call on Jesus and he will hear you, hear you and help you. He will be your friend. Remember, he loves you. And he also has the power to forgive your sins. Yeah, and he loves those. Um, he helps those who help themselves. Funny, it looks almost as if he was even involved. But um, yeah, if you do everything and give him the credit, you know, great relationship. Okay. Okay. Married Christians, Jesus warns that you must not commit adultery and desiring someone of the opposite sex, even when you don't commit adultery, could be committing adultery in your heart. Young people. Thought crimes. First of all, that's a bunch of bullshit. That's some of uh, the bad advice put in Jesus' mouth, along with don't wash your hands before you eat. Oh, and that bit about the mustard seed being the smallest thing on earth ever, anywhere. Excuse me. Yeah, 
and he could see all the kingdoms of the world from a mountaintop. Yeah. Anyhow. Uh, Stay away from drugs and sex sins. If you have sin, God will forgive you. Yeah, if you forgive yourself first, he'll forgive you. And it's almost like you did it yourself. So, yeah, this is what I want to talk about. I mean, I am not... Uh, I have not committed adultery with every woman I've looked at with desire. And it doesn't say it the way you say it. It's, it's strictly talking to men, telling them, you know... Uh, Except when it's got polygamy in it, you know, and patriarchs and all that. Um, but it doesn't say much, actually. Call on him now while there is still time. Find strong Christian adults and ask them if you call, if you can talk with them about your problems. You will be glad that you took the time now in this world before it's too late. It also says, I looked at the soul of the man and I was reminded of my own children. Oh God, may they serve you. I know that many of you who are reading this have loved ones. Maybe children that you do not want to go to hell. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about Jesus before it's too late. Tell them to repent of their sins and that God will forgive them and make them holy. The man cries rang inside me for days. I will never forget his cries of regret. I remember the flesh hanging and, and burning in the flames. Mm, I cannot forget market. the decay, the smell of death, the holes where his eye once worked, the dirty gray so souls worked. and the worms that crawl through the bones, the form of the young man that raised his arms toward Jesus, pleading as we walked away toward the next pit. Okay. So we go on to the final pit. So this is Jesus' private torture chamber. I mean, he's given a tour of a domain that he conquered. Remember, he broke open the gates of hell and all that and took a bunch of people in and then made other people <laughs> guilty of this new hell, just like there's Muslim hell. And that's funny, you're not afraid of going to Muslim hell, are you? That's interesting. <sighs> Or Zoroastrian hell. Soon we came to a pit where the woman was. She was pleading with all her soul for Jesus to take her out of there. Or she said, Have haven't I been here long enough? My torment is more than I can bear. Please, Lord, let me out. Sob shook her form, and such pain was in her voice. I knew she was suffering greatly. I said, Jesus, is there, is there nothing you can do? Jesus then spoke to the woman. While you were on earth, he said, I called and called for you to come to me. That's what he used I to dog whistle. with you to get your heart right with me. To forgive others, to do right, to stay out of sin. I even visited you in the midnight hour and drew you by my spirit time after time. With your lips, you said you loved me, but your heart was far from me. Didn't you know that nothing could be hidden from God? You fooled others, but you could not fool me. I sent, I still sent, I sent still others to tell you to repent. But you would not listen. You would hear. You would not hear. You Which one? would not see. And in anger, you turn them away. I placed you no, where you could point. hear my word. But you would not give your heart to me. In other words, somebody invited her to church. Or she, in some kind of way she went, well... Somebody was preaching, and she still didn't go. So, that's what that was. <laughs> so, let me ask you do, you, do you love Krishna? Hmm. 
You're not afraid of pissing him off, huh? Interesting. See, some people have faith in that instead. So, faith is only a good thing if you're lucky enough to be put in the right one. Usually geographically, based upon your culture. <sighs> you are not sorry, nor were you ashamed of what you were doing. You, you hardened your heart and turned me away. Now you are lost forever, undone. You should have listened to me. At this, she looked at Jesus and began to swear and to curse. I felt the presence of evil spirits and knew that it was they who were cursing and swearing. Mm. Mm. How sad to be how sad to be lost forever in hell. Resist the devil while you still may, and he will free. And he will flee from you. That's scripture. Jesus said, the world and all of it, all that is in it will pass away. But my words will not pass away. Okay. We don't that even know what his words the really were. of this chapter. Um, now for a quick prayer. Oh, great. Oh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak your word. Mm. And to discuss your word and talk about him. I pray that others can learn more depth in your word than they did before, and they also repent of their sins and turn their heart, their hearts towards Getting you. Hydrated. In Jesus' name I pray. Now now Let's go over some questions. We have some discussion questions. Let's talk about them. First discussion questions. Have you ever experienced random people coming to you, telling you to go to the Lord, especially when you felt distant from God? Uh, do you feel distant from Odin? Just wondering. Well, how about Uhura Mazda? You're not really... That's weird. See, you don't have faith in that shit. But the people that do, that shit's real. And you're wrong. It's dead. The fact is, you can't all be right, but you can all be wrong. And I think you are. Okay. Here's the next question. In the pits, there was a woman leading a double life. One who was faithful but didn't forgive, and one who waited too late. Which one can you relate to? Can you learn from their mistakes? Okay, I'm gonna discuss uh, about the first question. First question is: Have you ever been distant? And well, the first question was. Have you ever experienced random people coming to you, telling you to go to the Lord, especially when you felt distant from God? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a time when I just quit going to church. I just stopped going, period. I stopped reading, reading the Bible. I stopped praying. Because um, I had moved away. I had moved to a whole other city. You know, it was on my heart to find another church or whatever. But I never really did. I procrastinated on that. <laughs> so while I was at work, I'm a lady had pulled up in this bus. Okay. At work? It was like a, a shuttle bus to oh. bring employees to the airport. That's my work. So she pulled up in the shuttle so bus. So you work at the airport. Okay. She opened the door and she said, Hello. And I looked up and she said, Hey, and she said, I know you from somewhere. I just don't know where. I said, Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Then she looked at me, she said, I'm gonna find out. So 
she drove off. Okay. Now I went on about my business doing what I need to do. She came around again and she said, she opened the door and she said, don't you go to Latter Day? She like Latter Day Koji Church. I wish I went to. I mean, I said, yeah. She said, Brother Franklin. I said, yeah. I don't know who this woman is, by the way. I don't know who she is. Uh, you know, I'm not, I don't remember seeing her at church at all. But she know my name. Whoa. She know where I'm, where I was from. So she knows something. So she said, why don't you come back? We still in the same spot. You know, we didn't leave anywhere. And I said... You didn't leave anywhere? Okay. She said, okay. Well, don't be a stranger now. She said, Whoa. And she drove on. <laughs> so I decided in my heart that I was going to go to church the following Sunday. So I did. I ended up getting saved again. Again? I couldn't believe it. You got that was a crazy born story. again, again. But yeah, um, and it, this this type of stuff happened. I can relate. Time and time again. I got time saved and time a few times. Again. Okay. Time and time again. Hmm. I can try to run away from God. I can skip. I can jump. I can fly. I can do this. I can do that. Wait. How do you fly? <laughs> In an aeroplane, maybe? I don't know. What? Uh, run away from God? Dude. <laughs> running to God is running away from reality. <laughs> You're running away from yourself. Rah. <laughs> Boy, everything just revolves around you. Uh, case in point. I got a family member. And love him dearly and respect him immensely in many ways. Um, he was indoctrinated as a child, like me. And he got a, had, went through rebellious teen years. Ended up in the family way. Struggling in the beginning. Driving to work at, at the, before the sun's up. And there's a bowling ball in the middle of the road. And he hits the bowling ball. I think he said it was rolling down the road in the AM on a rural twisty mountain road, Highway 193, between Lincoln and Newcastle in Northern California. Um, anyway, fucked his car all up. He had to go open some gas station, and here he is stranded now. It's like four in the morning, maybe. He starts praying because he was desperate. He had to do something. He's praying, and suddenly some headlights appear, and some guy picks him up, says, "Hey, man, I got insomnia. What? I uh, raw uh, tells about the bowling ball. They both pray, and he got sick." Because he hit a bowling ball on the road, and it was kind of fucking weird. Didn't seem to think about the fact that, oh, you know, sometimes people roll bowling balls in the middle of the night because they're fucking pricks. And they delight in causing mischief and mayhem. Many of them are... Some pretty, I mean, pretty fucked up, twisted people. Probably raised religious... All right. Anyway, Kev, he's sort of thinking about getting saved, and he got he got saved and saved again, so he's a backslider. So I get it. He's one of those. He's kind of talking about himself here. I can't run. You can't I run. I can't get away because All you're right. running from yourself. Why am I running? Because you're an idiot. I don't know. Why am I running? I can't run from God because God is in me. I cannot, cannot come run away well, that's your them. imaginary friend. You can't run away from there. that. His spirit is still on me all the, on me all the time. So I can't run. All right? So. 
serve him. You know, I'm a serve him. I try to run because he's controversial. Controversial. <laughs> not, not everybody will take him. They will reject him. Therefore, they will reject me. So, okay, fine. All right. So, yeah. I'm in front of this camera. <laughs> um, like I said, my name is Kevin Franklin. This has been another episode yeah. of Real Christ Talk. Let's talk about it for those who want to leave their comments below. Please do so. You want to leave... Uh, you know what? I'll leave a comment right now. Kev, what the fuck did that have to do with the video that you put this link in the comment section on? Look, I miss response videos too. And, I mean, yeah, I mean, I hear I am talking about abortion and I get LOL kittens. You know, I understand it was abused, but I miss response videos. Got so lively, Ponage Olympics and all that. <sighs> but you know, it's because we start drawing Muhammad, that's what it was. That's what brought it down. So no more, because if they could leave video responses, you know, you might start a wave. <sighs> anyway, all right, Kev. Um, you're just a spammer, sorry. You know, you didn't even watch my video a bit. I challenge you, Kevin, to leave a proper response to the video. Make a video responding to the video you responded to that you probably didn't watch in the fucking first place. And then I'll give you congrats. I'll give you like 50,000 internets. You know, if you have faith, those are a real thing. Anyhow. Video response, feel free. I wish. You know, and let's talk about them. Let's talk about them. Let's and talk, I'll keep yeah. these videos coming straight to you. Peace. <sighs> so, anyhow, that's Kev. And uh, I think he's got some credits coming up, doesn't he? No, I guess not. All right. Uh, can I say about this shit? Uh, Kevin, leave a real response video. And like I said, I'll favorite it. How's that? If you do an actual response video to one of my videos, I will fucking favorite and feature it on my channel. Last video I made got seven views, so I mean, uh, we're talking some serious shit here. Anyhow, um, totally doing this video by the seat of my pants, and I think I've been, <laughs> I think this is one of my better efforts, but the martinis weren't bad, you know, a little, uh, a little thrown together, but I have a buzz, and that's what, that's what counts. Anyway, Kevin, you have your assignment, and the rest of you, hey, you want to leave video responses to me, um, you should add like maybe my name, my channel name, in the links, in the tags, uh, in the title of the video that you're responding to. We need to bring back response videos. Because I love asking people questions and hearing what they got to say. And I don't really, I don't censor people. I mean, I've only blocked a couple of people and they were dicks. Probably not you. You could probably say anything, even if it isn't nice. Stay tuned. I'll probably make something else tomorrow or the next day. I don't know. Peace. Fuck. Out. Have a wonderful... Whatever the fuck it is you're having, because I'm not bossy. I don't make demands on people. So whatever it is... I'm the the only one to talk to oh, wait. Dude! Producer Kevin Franklin. Music Kevin Franklin. Video editor Kevin Franklin. Graphic design Kevin Franklin. Host Kevin Franklin. Special thanks. Jesus and Nazareth. So it's kind of like Simon Garfunkel. You know, they have a like symbiotic relationship.
Anyhow, if you like this guy, I'll put a link in the description and all that. And hey, some sub them if you like him. I mean, or whatever. But uh, let's get some real video responses going.